I'm a very visual person, as you probably know. I love visual because it speaks to my heart, and God has always given me pictures and dreams and things that I've been able to share over the years. So when I was preparing this, I said, Lord, this is all about your grace, your salvation, and your mercy. And uh, I remembered years ago <clears throat> hearing a, a preach on salvation. Oh, all right, Boaz. <laughs> He's getting excited, I know. And um, somebody had made these parcels of a free gift. So I spent last night doing these parcels. They're not that great. And they're just a symbol, aren't they, um, of his salvation, his free gift. And uh, I did one, and I had another box, and I felt the Lord say to me, there's going to be two salvations today. And that's what the Lord put on my heart. So I did two. And Joab, praise God, already gave the message of salvation. Thank you, Lord, for that. So you're in completely in God's heart today. Because that's what he told me. Two salvations, two free gifts. And it is a free gift. This salvation, and I'm going to share that in a minute. Before I do that, you know, it's a free gift. So today, can you see all these presents up here? Yeah? No. Are you there? Are you awake? Are you looking? Are they are there, there? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. I'm going to be giving all these away. Because I want to give you some free gifts. Why is that? Because we've been given a free gift of eternal life, of salvation. It's free. We can't earn it. We can't work for it. It is free. And that's what I want to talk about today is his grace and his mercy. But I asked Tash if she could uh, stay in with the young ones. I'm looking for some young ones to give all these gifts out. Okay? So you're going to receive it. It's a free gift. Okay, guys. I'm going to ask you to settle down now. I know you're really excited with this free gift. Praise God. I can see you all munching and chewing. I, Ian, I can see you chewing. Okay. Praise God. It's a little bit of... Uh, I want to show a video. It's a little bit more serious because when we look at the mercy and grace of God... We have to look at the cross for what he's done. So I'm going to get Joe out to play a video before I move forward uh, with the next bit. So if we could get the lights out, Joab, if you could get the... Thank you, Lord, if we could turn all the lights out. Thank you, Lord.
This is never going to be easy to, to speak after watching that. But that's the reality of what Jesus did for us on the cross. If we don't sometimes see that in our mind's eye as well about the cross, all of it is meaningless because that's the whole meaning of our faith, isn't it? What he did on that cross, he died, that death on that cross, his unconditional love poured out for us. It's a hard watch to see what Jesus went through, but it's a reminder of why we're all here, of what the two ladies have done today. They've come to him that died on the cross, but praise God, he was resurrected to new life. And that's what we stand in today. Through his death, he made a way back to the Father through Jesus. It's a hard thing to put that up, but I really felt it was significant for today to be talking about his mercy and his grace. His amazing love, the song we sing, Amazing Grace, I once a wretch, but now I see. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, just give me a minute just to move on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So in John 3, verse 16, I'm sure John and many others here know that off by heart. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, for all those who believe on him will shall not die but have eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for that unconditional love for us today. We can never go too far from the cross. You need to rein us in and bring us back sometimes to that place. Because as we move on and things happen and life becomes life again, we know that we're on a journey with him. It's called sanctification, where the Holy Spirit does that work of conviction in our heart. And then he gives us the power to overcome sin in our life. And it's a journey for every one of us. Some of us have just come to Jesus, like you ladies today. Some of us, a few years here. And some of us have been on the road a long time. Every one of us need to come back to that place again of his mercy and grace. You know, today we've been singing a few, the songs that we sang was all about his grace and his mercy. We can never, ever get away from what he's done for us. He loves us so much. God wanted to make a way back from our fallen state of inherited sin or a sin nature that we inherited through the fall of Adam and Eve. He always had a plan to bring us back to himself. The Trinity, three, Father God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit had that plan right from the beginning that God would send his son, Jesus, to die on that cross. And uh, going forward, we knew that he cried out to the Father, but he said, not your will, but my will be done. Thank you, Lord. And this is what I want to share so it's grace and mercy, and we've just watched that video, I know, but we have so much to rejoice for because he didn't leave us in that place. He gave us new life. He came to set the captive free. He came to give us life in abundance. So going forward, <coughs> I can talk now. So mercy and grace. I want to talk first of all about... Um, what that means to us. Lots of us have been on the road a while and can say exactly what it means. But I think just today to take some nuggets from what I'm going to share is from the scripture and to meditate again on these two words. So mercy is an act of withholding deserved punishment. Not one of us deserved to be saved in that way. We all inherited that sin nature and that God cannot look on sin. But mercy is the act of withholding that punishment of death. 
Well, grace is the act of giving free gift of a merited favor. We don't deserve it. He did it for us. So in his mercy, God does not give us the punishment we deserve, namely hell, complete separation from him, whilst in grace, God gives us the gift that we do not deserve called heaven. So praise God today. Should we give him a, a clap for that? Thank you, Lord. So for us here today that are born again, we're not going to be in that place of separation. We're going to be one day with him in heaven face to face. And it says in the words so much about that, doesn't it? About that there's going to be that wedding feast. There's going to be praise to his name. It's going to be a glorious day when we see him face to face. But here at the moment, we're on earth having our journey with him, whatever age we are. So grace comes first. So grace cannot be earned. God gave it freely through Jesus' death and resurrection. And the Greek word here is charis, and it's revealed through his son, Jesus. We believe that through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, God's grace is for all, believe, all that believe in him. So grace comes first, salvation. In Titus 2, verse 11, it says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. What an amazing scripture. Okay. Also, in Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, it says, For grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one can boast. Not one of us can stand here, can we, and boast of anything in our own strength. Thank you, Lord, for those scriptures. Jesus is a free gift, and there are many scriptures on his amazing grace. Now today, I'm not going to be here all afternoon, you're fine. <laughs> Praise God. This is a subject with so many scriptures and verses that would, I always encourage people because you have to bring it right down to a small amount of time. Go away. Look up those scriptures on grace and mercy. It'll blow you away. Like I always say, you start doing... Um, a preach or a share on his word and it goes off in so many tangents because there's so many so many things added to what I can share here at this moment with the time I've got go away and look for them yourself you'll be blown away okay so we all came the same way we accepted Jesus a free gift amen, amen. yeah you were very noisy down you've gone really quiet on me I like a bit of participation. So accepting Jesus is a free gift, and there are many scriptures um, involving this. But grace involves giving us blessings of salvation and spiritual gifts that we do not deserve and we cannot earn through our own efforts. It is a gift freely given by God. It is motivated by his love and his compassion for us. And that's why I felt to give all these gifts gifts away. You could think, well, come on, you went out and spent a lot. No, Lee and uh, Nick, they got all this stuff in for the ladies' day. That's why there's so many. But they didn't turn up, did they, Lee? So she said, I don't know what you're going to do with them. They're all here in the church. And it just came to me, let's give them all away. Let's give them all away. It's a free gift. We've been blessed. Let's bless others. Take that gift and give it to someone else if you don't want it for yourself. So grace, again, is a free gift. We can't earn it. And motivated by his love and his compassion. Thank you, Jesus, for your love and your compassion on my life. So now let's look at mercy. So mercy is about God's compassion and leniency towards us, despite our sin. Through his mercy, God shows his willingness to forgive and restores those who genuinely seek him with a repentant heart. And that's what we've been talking about, haven't we, over the last few weeks uh, that have been shared. So we receive mercy through what Jesus has done on the cross. But mercy is the willingness to forgive when we sin again and restore us. So there's a place that we need to come. I do it every morning where we come 
as I say, in the morning I come and say, Lord, I am so sorry for the things I've done, even thought that aren't of you. And I just want to lay that at your feet of your cross today. Was was amazing that the conviction of the Holy Spirit is not condemnation. It's conviction to get us back in that right place with him. So when we come and we just lay that before him, he's there to restore us straight away. He can't wait to get back in that place of restoration with us. He forgives us. Anybody blown away by that? That we've got a father in heaven that wants to forgive us and take us on daily with him. Isn't that exciting? Thank you, Lord. His grace provides salvation and eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. God's mercy allows us to repent and to be reconciled with him. We need to do this, guys, every day. We really do. You know, if we don't do this, we make a block between him and us. It's not clear. I always go upward so that we don't block. So we need to go outward, don't we? Like the cross, he points heavenward. We want that relationship with him, not blocked by sin in our life. And then the cross goes outward. That Then when we come into that place, we can move outward with him in our lives. Praise God, you know, if we could get hold of what he's done on the cross for us, but his grace and mercy, it just compels us to keep going and to share his love with others that they can be in that same place. Okay, so I'm going to just share some scriptures about mercy. Again, so many, I put do a study on grace and mercy. You will see what God did through his son for me and you. Ephesians 2, 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, rich, that's a good word, rich in mercy. Not a little bit, <clears throat> not if he's not feeling so good. Not like us when we're having a bad day, we're not so rich in mercy. He gives the fullness, rich in mercy, never ending, overflowing to us. Thank you, Lord. So let's look up um, Ephesians 2. Verse 4, again, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. That's how much he loves us, guys. It's wonderful. I put here Ephesians 2, verses 1 to 10. I'm not going to read all that out, but go home and read that. That's the whole paragraph on there to read out. So mercy scriptures, in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1, it says, Therefore we have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. (coughs) Excuse me. (coughs) This is the mercy we have been given. But we are to offer it to the unsaved the same when giving the gospel. That's what this scripture means. Thank you, Lord, for that. It says, therefore, we have this ministry. It's in context of the ministry of the gospel to to give to others. We have received mercy. If we've been given that richness of mercy, how much more should we be giving it out when we speak to the lost? And then it says, if we do this, we do not lose heart. Because sometimes we can have bad weeks. I know out on the streets trying to share with people, people walk away sometimes. Our neighbors, we've been telling them about Jesus, our, our relations. It's been tough at times. But it's saying here <clears throat> not to give up, to keep giving out that mercy. We will not lose heart. Excuse me a minute. Sorry. It's the end of this call. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> yeah, go in a minute. <clears throat> so in 1 Chronicles 16, verse 35... It says, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Sorry about this. Okay, so give thanks to the Lord. Have a grateful heart, for he is good. His mercy endures forever and ever and ever. That's how far his mercy extends, forever and ever. Oh, thank you. 
I think we've all had the, this. Anybody not had it yet? <laughs> not nice. Thank you. Okay, so in Hebrews 4, verse 16, this is one of my favorite scriptures. It always comes to me, especially in the morning when I have that time with the Lord. Let us, therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace. What an amazing scripture. Here we come boldly to the throne of grace, complete confidence before him that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This is so important. I have this picture, which I've shared before, that you've got the throne of grace, and you've got Father God, and you've got Jesus there at the right hand of the Father, it says, interceding on our behalf. So when I come into that throne of grace, because I see things visually, I see myself coming in to this place with a throne, as much as I can see, you know, Jesus, which obviously you have to just, you know, place your thoughts into that and the Father God, but that's how I feel in his presence. He says, I'm coming in with that confidence. And he says, hello, Anne, you come in, t- you come into this throne room that I've offered. I can come in with boldness. That's how intimate it is. You know, sometimes do we get there at dinner hour? <laughs> don't worry. We get there at dinner hour, or sometimes we don't get there for a day. Or maybe we even leave it for a couple of days. And I'm sure they're up there saying, well, Anne can't come in yet. She hadn't arrived yet. That's how personal he is with us. And you could think, well, all the people in the world that know him... Why would he be thinking of me? Well, that's what the word says. He's thinking of me. He's thinking of you. He knows you all by name. That's what his, his word says. He knows us all by name. So when we don't come, it's like inviting our family, isn't it, round for a meal or someone we love, and they don't bother to turn up. Would you miss them? Would you think, well, where are they? And I put all this lovely food on for them. I've laid everything out, and they've not even bothered to let me know that they can't make it. I'm sure we all have been in that place. I'm sure we've all grieved God's heart. Just come every day. Come into that throne room. Get yourself right before him, because he just wants to bless us. He just wants to bless our socks off, because he loves us so much. So just moving on, I just wanted to say a few things about how should we see God's grace and mercy affect our lives? How can we, with receiving his grace and mercy, make an effect on others? So I put here a few things down. To show mercy to others because he is merciful to us. Good one. Acts of kindness, forgiveness, and compassion towards those in need or have wronged us. Now, that's not so easy at times, is it? There's what, do we all struggle? Yeah? It's, it's easy to read out what the Word says, but applying it, which is what we're supposed to do, is a lot harder. I hope today, when I go through the Scriptures and share about grace and mercy, especially mercy now, that we'll be thinking twice of our own lives, how we show mercy to others. We all fall short. We're not condemned, but it's good to be convicted. In Luke 6, verse 36, it says, Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. And that's a statement. So as we've received his mercy, how can we not be merciful to others? In James 2, verse 13, it says, Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Well, that's a big one. Because judgment without mercy. 
I think we've all been there at times. We've made judgments on each other, judgments on the lost. But that's not God's heart. This is why it's good today to go back to grace and mercy to show what we've been given ourselves. How can we not move forward and try to get that right in showing mercy and not judgment to others? We should be merciful in our daily lives. And this is a big one as well. To our enemies, strangers, the poor. Romans 12, verse 20. Well, Lord, I can, I can just about be merciful to, you know, that, those people I know in my life because I know their heart. We all make mistakes. You know, we all slip up. So, of course, I'm going to be merciful. I don't know about my enemies, though. Anybody feel like that? Don't know about the enemies that come against you. They got, you know, we're doing things in your life or affecting your life. Before I was a Christian, which I know is a long time ago, but I still remember it well. I never believed the judgments I had in my heart. I never believed that anybody was my enemy, I could wipe them out. Might not look like now, it's 72, but... I'm not going there, what I used to be like. <laughs> Sam's always laughing. In my junior school, they called me Benetti Basher. My name was Bennett. <laughs> Benetti Basher. I mean, what a thing. It sounded like it went around beating everybody up. I was a bit of a Robin Hood when I hit the next school. And my sister was two years younger than me. And she was absolute opposite personality. And um, she came to school... And because she was the opposite personality and no confident, the crowd that were the bullies, well, they're all, they tried to set on her. And she said, oh, I don't think you should do that. My sister is Anne Bennett. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, had a, I had a reputation. <laughs> they kept away from her. Oh, it's not good. It's not good. It's not good. But I did it because I was a bit of a Robin Hood. I couldn't stand injustice, and I still can't stand injust injustice, you know? But it doesn't make it right the way I handled it. But I handled it the way I thought was okay. But the point I'm making, I stood up against the enemies. This is not what God is saying here, you know? Wiping them out. And I'm sure, looking at you men, I'm sure you've had a good old you know, fight at some points in your life. Yeah? Oh, no, you're all perfect here, I know. <laughs> no one's made a stand like me at all in any way, have they? Thank you, Lord. I'm trying to make the point that it's saying here to be merciful in our daily life to our enemies. Whew. Help me, Lord, on that one. Strangers, the poor. I find it easier, don't you, to have more of that on the poor? Because they're in need, isn't that? But I hope after 40 years there's some sort of things that are showing me a fruit of mercy and grace. Thank you, Lord. So how should we respond? How should we respond to this undeserved kindness? The Bible teaches us three ways. Okay, so I've written recognize, accept, and grow. So we need to recognize... We must accept our need and humbly accept we are all sinners and everything we have is thanks to him. So it's that grateful heart. It's recognizing our need of him with a grateful heart. Let us shed off our pride and shift our focus away from ourselves because that's where we can go. We forget quickly mercy that he's given us and we can move in it's all about me and that's exactly where the lord has taken us from because it's not all about us anymore it's all about him so last week i was at the conference up in Ipswich with rich and nick and i spoke on um, the scripture about our unveiled face um, and being that mirror image of him and growing from glory to glory. And the thing that really stood out to me when I did that little share that the Lord showed me was beholding him and reflecting him. So as we behold him, 
as we keep our eyes on him and see his character in the word and his compassion and grace and all his character going forward, we start reflecting him. And I think that's what this is about. Get away from ourselves, behold him, start reflecting him. Only by doing this can we acknowledge his presence in our lives and all the blessings we receive from him. Don't let's block that channel. The next word is accept. He has given us his grace and mercy for free, never asking anything in return. So we need to wholeheartedly accept because this is the best way of showing our gratefulness in everything we have received. That's what it said earlier in that scripture, and not one of us can boast. He's done it all. We find it really hard to receive. It's like I've given you all a gift today. And God gives us many gifts, but it always seems sometimes we have to work. Our flesh seems to want to do something in return. We find it hard to just accept that free gift. And we know that when we accept that free gift of salvation, we can't earn it. We can do nothing going forward to earn it. All he's looking to us to do is surrender our lives. We make it so complicated. In our flesh, we do. We make things complicated, but it's simple. It might not be simple to surrender, but if we're on that journey with him and his grace and salvation and his mercy has been poured out on us, then we need to come and surrender our lives to him. It's all about that love relationship with him. He poured out his love unconditionally on us. We want to respond by the love that we have for him and live our lives for him as well. And the next one is grow. When we accept his grace, we begin to grow in his love. In time, these seeds of love that he has planted in our hearts will take root and bear fruit. Anybody want to be a fruit bearer? I want to be a raspberry. No. I'm joking, sorry. Well, it just came to me then. Fruit bearer. We know the fruits in the word, don't we? So we want to be a fruit bearer for him. So when we look at that fruit that he's saying, it's not easy. Long-suffering, isn't it? Patience and all those. I can't remember them all. Anybody remember more? Shout it out. Yeah. Wow. That's what we need to be bearing, guys, through his mercy. Let that seed that's planted in our heart take root to bear his fruit. Then we will do acts of kindness and compassion, and we can spread it to the lost. The grace and mercy that he has shown us, we want to pour out, don't we, to others. As we carry the torch of God's love, may we shine in the darkness, spreading his mercy to each other and the lost. It's a very short message, but very clear what God wants us to do through his grace and mercy. Now, there could be three situations that you find yourself in today. So the one already that Joab has shared was the top of my list, but praise God, Joab. Thank you, Lord. I put, do you have a relationship with Jesus? He's made a way to receive salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. Through his death on the cross, it is a free gift. It's called the grace of God. So thank you, Lord, that these two ladies have made that step toward you. Is there anyone else here, even the young ones, the younger ones, who feel they haven't made that step? Speak to Ben, Joab, or any of the leaders after. I'll put the second one here. Maybe you feel lukewarm on what I'm sharing. Maybe you feel lukewarm in your understanding of his grace and mercy. Maybe you haven't been showing his grace and mercy to others like you should. As I say, it's not condemnation, it's just conviction sometimes that we've been in a place where we haven't been quite 
showing that mercy that he poured out on us. Or maybe you haven't really fully understand about God's grace and mercy being a free gift. Maybe you have found yourselves trying to earn it, trying to work your way into his favor, or thinking that you've got a gift that God has got for you, but you've got to do some work in it. The thing is, when we get into that place of trying to earn it, we begin to strive. When really all we need to do is ask and wait on the Lord.